Good morning, Clarence Farrington Elementary. Happy Monday, September the 26th, 2022. I hope you all had a fantastic weekend. I hope you got to get out and enjoy this famous fall weather. It was um, quite the beautiful weekend. We do not have any birthdays in the building today. However, I do want to give a special shout out to London in Miss Kaiser's class because being the big goofball I am, I completely missed your birthday on Friday. I did get to give you a birthday hug in the hallway. However, I didn't get to shout you out on morning message. So happy birthday a little bit late to London in Miss Kaiser's class. We do not have any announcements this morning, so we are going to start straight away with our mindful breathing exercise. Don't forget, it's super important to practice mindful breathing whenever you're feeling good, so when you're not feeling good, you'll have the tools that you need to make yourself feel better. If you're able to, breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. We're going to take three big elevator breaths together. Breathe in. Breathe out. Good morning. Breathe in. Breathe out. Something popped up on my computer. Last big breath in. And out. Fantastic job. This morning, we are going to pick up where we left off in our story about Pura Belpri. I'm going to take us back just a little bit. At first, like many other Puerto Rican women who migrated from the island to the United States, she toiled as a garment worker. She was offered the library assistant job thanks to her education and the library's need for her Spanish language skills after her newlywed sister turned it down. Puerto, Puerto Rican women of her time, <clears throat> totally messed up. Some historians have noted that Pura had more liberty than most young Puerto Rican women of her time to pursue this opportunity because she wasn't living under the supervision of her parents, nor was she married with children. In addition to doing the typical work of an assistant librarian, she presented puppet shows in English and in Spanish. She considered the library the jewel of the community. Her time there, she would later say, was especially rewarding. It acquainted me with Black culture, and I experienced the Black renaissance of art and literature and the upsurge of poets, novelists, dramatists, and musicians. I saw the beginning of the now Schomburg collection into being, come into being. In fact, Arturo Schomburg, the black Puerto Rican historian whose collection of literature, art, and narratives from the basis of the Schomburg Center for Research in Black Cultures Holdings used to come to the library and chat with Pira. At 40, she married Clarence Cameron White, an African-American violinist and composer, whose papers are now part of the Schomburg Collection, and they resided in Harlem throughout their marriage. She left the 135th Street branch after several years to work at the 115th Street branch, which would become an important cultural center for Latino residents of the city. There she arranged for famed Mexican muralist Diego Rivera to lecture, celebrated Latino feast days, and honed her storytelling and puppetry skills. She later worked at the 110th Street branch before retiring to concentrate on writing her books. After her husband's death in 1960, she came out of retirement to work again at the New York Public Library, this time in the South Bronx. She died in 1982 but her legendary status as a storyteller lives on in the award named after her. To this day, Teatro S.E.A., a Latinx children's theater in New York, sends its actresses out to perform puppet shows at schools. At schools. Goodness gracious, Miss West can't read. At schools dressed up as Pira. All right, friends, that is all I have for today, thank goodness, because I am making a mess. I hope you have a great day or not.
the choice is yours.